and we are protected, and uh, we live by faith and not by fear. And so let me just encourage you to, uh, it's good that you're listening out there on the, on your internet and on your TV but, and over the radio, but we're so glad that God's people are returning to the house of God. And so we just want you to know that you are a part of the family, and we look forward to seeing your happy face in here again. Amen. Also, when we take the offering at the end of the service, uh, you can uh, still do your tithing. Uh, you can uh, drop an envelope off to the office here during the week, during office hours. You can do it on, um, do, do it <coughs> give online. A lot of people are giving online. And you just go to freddyhall.org, and, and you can give there with your debit card. And God, uh, the work of God is going forward. Praise the Lord. Through Zell. My wife just told me Zell. I don't know what Zell is, but you do. So do, do the Zell. <laughs> okay. There's so many ways to do this, I can't even pronounce the names anymore. The... Uh, but good to see Barbara over there. Praise the Lord, Barbara. Good morning. You're getting healed. Amen. We believe in God with you, honey. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're, we're Open your Bible to the book of, well, we're going to be at the same scriptures we were in last week. Uh, I have felt led by the Holy Ghost to declare war on COVID, not at the viral level, not at the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the level of, of protocols. I don't have anything against protocols, but we believe Jesus is bigger than the virus. And uh, the, uh, uh, so we're not going to get into that debate whether to mask or not mask or whether to get shot or, or shoot somebody or we're, we're just not going there. So that's your adults. You make your decisions. You know what's by now after two years, if you don't know what to do, I don't know what to do for you. The, uh, so we've done it all. And we just believe God has led us to obey God rather than man. And God said to assemble ourselves together on the first day of the week. Uh, so we are here. And we haven't had one report of anybody catching virus here. People that we, we've lost a couple or three people, valuable people in our congregation. It's not that we're taking the virus lightly. We're, in fact, we're taking it very seriously, probably more serious than anybody. We are more serious than the medical people. We are more serious than Dr. Fauci. We're, doc we're more serious than the CDC and the health department. We believe with all of our heart that God has made us some promises. And go ahead and clap for the promises of God. And one of those promises is that Luke 10, 17, God has given us power over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means can hurt us. We claim that. If you're not claiming it, don't complain if you get sick. But you're standing on the word of God. And God promise to protect us. God's promise to heal us. God's promises that we are a blessed people. But I talked about this the other day, is it declaring war, and I'm calling it now a resistance movement. Resistance. We are resisting the devil. We're not resisting people. We're not resisting medicine. We're not resisting uh, advice at the medical level, we are resisting the devil on the spiritual level. Are you hearing me so far? And we, uh, we are declaring a resistance against the devil on the authority of the Word of God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Amen. I'm saying that at the spiritual level, it's time for us as men and women of God to Stop being fearful. Don't live in fear any longer. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a controlled mind. I think in a lot of the panic, the, the, uh, 
the pandemic panic, people haven't been thinking straight. They're just panicky. Where do I hide? Where do I hide? There's no place to hide. Only place to hide is in Jesus. So let me just encourage you to raise yourself up in your mind and in your heart. Rise up above all this chatter about virus. Raise yourself up above the, the political level of the virus. Raise yourself up above the social level of the virus. Because you and I are spirit-filled men and women of God, and we live by faith and not by sight. We are not moved by what the world is moved by. We don't fear what the world fears. They need to fear what we fear. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Praise the Lord. Well, all three of you like that. The, uh, let me try that again. We don't fear what the world fears as men and women of God. They need to fear what we fear. We fear God. So, so we're, we're, we understand. And I know that some of you, your, your eyes just kind of went crossed right there when I said that. And you, you did not say it out loud, but in your mind you were saying, huh? <laughs> Think it through. We are not like them. And they're not like us. We are born again. We have a new heart. And we're getting a new mind because our mind has been renewed by the word of God. And so it's time for us to rise up. We are, it's time for, for two years. I'm talking to us. I'm not talking to the world. If you're out there in the world listening to me on the internet, Follow your rules. But if you're a child of God, washed in the blood of Jesus, name written in the Lamb's book of life, a Jesus lover, let me tell you something. You need to get with the rule book right here. And we need to fear what God says to fear and don't fear what God says to fear not. And Get our faith in the Word of God. And we need, for what I was getting ready to say, for two years, Christians, we have been on the, in the defensive mode. We've been huddled up. We are, we've been hiding in our homes. We've been hiding from the virus. And guess what? The fire, virus will find you no matter where you're hiding. The virus will find you. I was sharing with the leaders in our leadership prayer this morning that there's three things. To I'm going to tell you this because I want you to understand another strong point is that I made two weeks ago. That is that there, um, don't take the devil lightly. I learned this from Dr. Lester Summerall years ago. He's with the Lord now, one of the big, best evangelists of the last generation. Lester Summerall, get his books and read them. They're on Amazon, I'm sure. But Brother Summerall taught us, and the first time he said this, it just kind of made my eyes roll back because I wasn't sure he was right, but I studied it out, and he was right. Take the devil seriously, but don't fear him. He is a formidable foe. He is a formidable enemy that we have to take serious. Let's go to the political, military level of warfare. Do you think we would have defeated Japan after they attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor if we never took them serious? No, we had to take them very serious. They were a formidable foe. A, a, you respect your enemy, but you don't fear them. Hello. We would have never defeated Germany and Hitler, Hitler's Germany, if we did not take him seriously. 
we would have never won the Cold War against Russia if we didn't take Russia seriously and the communist uh, attempt to take over the earth. We have to take them serious. But that doesn't mean that we hide from them. That doesn't mean that we run from them. Christians, it's time for us to come out of the closet. It's time for us to come out of our hidey holes. It's time for us to get, get out of quarantine, lock down, lock up, lock, lock around, what, uh, lock down, lock up. I don't know which one we're in. But let me tell you something. It's time for Christians to stand up and say, we have the power. We were just singing it. Is that just a song that we sing at church, or is it something we really believe in our heart and act like it? We have the power. Didn't Nancy sing that good this morning? We have the power in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. COVID was defeated on the cross. By his stripes, we are healed. We stand up, and I'm going to be, uh, and I'm, what I'm teaching to you now is how to get ready for the battle, because we are starting February, the 1st of February next month, I'm going to give you, give a, you our, our battle plan against the devil. It's not just good enough to stay strong, it's tell me, me to tell you to be strong. You're looking at me and saying, huh, how do you do that, Pastor? I'm going to tell you how in February, but... The how-to right now is to we have to get ourselves ready for battle. We have to get ourselves ready. We have a couple young men just going into the military. There's one of them right there, Gabriel. Are they going to do anything with your hair when you get in there? <laughs> we won't even recognize you, Gabe, when you come back. Gabe's going into the Air Force. Heath, yeah, give him a yeah, Gabriel, Heath is going into the Army, right? Navy. Navy. He's going to be in the Navy. He's been our, our projector guy back there for a long time. But Gabriel, uh, Heath is going into the Navy. They've already been sworn in, and I'm proud of these young men. Give them both a good hand clap. But, Gabriel, I don't know if you're aware of it, but your first experience, as I understand, is boot camp. Look at him. He's a skinny mini guy over there right now. When he comes back, he's going to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> the, uh, you, we got to get ready. And then at the spiritual level, we have to get ourselves ready. The Bible says that bodily exercise profits you a little, but spiritual exercise helps a lot. And so what I'm going to tell you, I, from now until the 1st of February, we're in boot camp. We're going to get some training from right here, and I'm your drill instructor. I'm going to borrow Jim's title, Gunny Freddy. <laughs> and we're going, we're, you know, forget about chasing the devil if you're scared of your shadow. Forget about chasing the devil if, if you're living and crouching in fear and hiding from the enemy. No, it's time for, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build you so full of faith. I'm going to build you so full of self-confidence. I'm build, so build you up in your spirit, man, and we're going to start doing some spiritual exercises. And come Valentine's Day, the devil is going to be running for cover. I say let's put the devil in quarantine. Let's put a mask over his face and muzzle him. Are you following me? I'm, it's time for us to stand up as the new army of God fighting spiritual battles. And we are not winning, fighting for victory. We are exercising the victory Jesus already won for us. Jesus defeated the devil. He defeated, defeated sickness, sin, and diseases on the cross. 
And when he died, he, said, he came back and read it in the book of Revelation. He said, I'm alive forevermore. The re Go ahead. Get happy about it. The resurrection is the proof of that victory. Jesus said, I'm back from the dead. I'm back from the grave. And he said, and I hold in my hands three keys, the keys to death, the keys to hell, and the, cre and the key uh, to death, hell, and the grave. Yeah, the grave. Hallelujah. We don't fear death. We don't fear the grave. We don't fear hell anymore. If you're afraid of going to hell, you need to get saved. I don't care how long you've been going to church, if you're still afraid of dying and going to hell, you don't have any confidence, you need to get with one of our prayer warriors and let them explain to you from the Word of God what it means to be a Christian, how to be a Christian. And that means believing in the Lord with all your heart. Confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your Lord. If you're, if you're just a part-time Christian, one foot in the church and the other in the world, there's no such thing as a half Christian. Either you're a Christian or you're not. God is saying this pandemic, this battle is to separate the, the weak from the strong, the committed from the double-minded, and to separate the, the sheep from the goats. Because only the fit I don't agree with Charles Darwin on most things, the, the author of evolution theory, but I do agree with the principle of the survival of the fittest. We're, we're going to get you fit. Uncle Sam's going to get those young men fit. I'm going to get you, with the help of the Lord, spiritually fit, spiritually agile, and you are going to be ready to win this battle. Amen. No more fear. Yeah. Hallelujah. So, open your Bible to the book of James. This is the text that we were in last week. James chapter uh, 4. James chapter 4, verse 5. This is, we read this last week. Well, I'm trying to decide which verse to start with for sure. Let's go to the, let's, let's start in verse 6. He, meaning God, gives us more grace. Everybody say grace. Grace is the ability to understand that God has given you everything that you need. And that grace is God's free gift to us. It, when we got saved, it was the gift of salvation that was given to us freely. Our sins were forgiven. It didn't cost you a nickel to get saved. It didn't cost you a nickel to get forgiven. It cost more than a nickel. It cost your whole life. <laughs> but that's the grace of God, that God loves me so much that he gives me eternal life. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. In other words, there's nothing you can do to get saved except give yourself to Jesus. There's nothing, you can't do a good things to outweigh your bad things. Some people, people explain it like this. You remember, I don't know, did, did they have those old scales in the trading post where they weighed out meat and candy and, and all that? That's a balance scale. And they had a weight on this side, and when you put it on this side, and it comes up in the balance, that, then they put a pound weight over there, that you get a pound of meat. If you put five pounds over there, they put five pounds on this side, you know you got weight. That's the old skip. Some people want to do that with, with God, and, and, and it was a good thing in buying pork chops, but it's not a good thing when you're trying to get eternal life. You can't put on this side all of your sins of your past and put on this side all your good things that you're doing. And uh, 
you, you hope that when you get to heaven that there's enough on this side to outweigh your sins on this side. You don't, and you, uh, you don't want to go to heaven with, with your sins heavier than your good. You think of what I balance out and maybe tilt the balance. No, 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 no. Get that picture clear out of your mind. It's already paid for. There's nothing. You, it's by grace. It's free. And God's word is working for you. Can anybody see happy about that? Now, here's what I want you to understand on that same principle. Grace worked for our salvation, but the grace of God also works for our healing and our protection. And the grace of God also works, and more to the point, the, the, it works. The grace of God is what puts us over in spiritual warfare. You can't put COVID on this hand and put whatever you're putting on this hand. All the things that you do. I'm masking, I'm sh getting shots, I'm boosting, I'm boosting my booster, and I'm keeping the distance, and, and I'm doing everything on it. But it doesn't seem to be working. You know why? You're dependent on what you're doing to save you instead of the promises of the Word of God. The grace. Anybody can live by grace. So it's grace. And I'm here to tell you this morning and I've been telling you for two weeks now. It's time for God's people to stand up. Because even this week, let me give you three items in the news this week that will prove that what's working, our works, I mean us as a nation, us as a people, us as the, the inhabitants of planet Earth, is not working against the virus. Remember two weeks ago, Dr. Fauci stood beside President Trump in the White House and said if we do what he said in two weeks, we would flatten the curve and we would, this would all start going away. Well, they keep changing the goalpost on us. Keep moving it farther out. This week, early in the week, President Trump in a, in a, a who's president now? President Joe Biden, Joe Biden in a, uh, in a press conference said this, and you can look it up, Google it, it's all over the internet. He said, the federal government cannot win against virus, against the COVID virus. That's the president of the federal government. We can't win it. He said, we need help from all 50 states. Up till now, the line is, we got this. You states take it, uh, uh, just mind your own business. We got this. Now he's saying, no, we need you because we can't do it. What he's saying is, what we're doing, CDC is federal government. What we're doing is not working. It's not working. Proof that it's not working, two things. Number one is, Wednesday of this past week, According to all the news reports, one million new people got the virus in one day. Many, we don't know how many had the shots and who, who didn't have the shot, but they said it was a, it's a lot on both sides. Are you hearing me? I've got an amener over there. All right. Proof. The, what is working, the works of man are failing us. Second is, I was watching the news report just yesterday. It just came out yesterday afternoon. This new, what we've been calling a variant called Omicron, is not a variant at all. It's not a mutation of the COVID virus. It's a whole new virus. The first virus we know was, in, was, was made in a lab in Wuhan, China. Now, they're saying, as of yesterday, the, the Omicron is a manufactured virus from the COVID virus, but they, they, they manipulate it in labs. And, but it's not a natural mutation. It's a man-made mutation 
And it was made in a lab in South Africa. The system that we were told to depend on is not working. The government says they can't fix it. CDC can't fix it. Our only hope is this right here. God can fix it. Jesus said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's Luke 10, 19. Nothing by any means. You can write Omicron, you can write Delta, you can write COVID-19 uh, on it, you can put anything on it, because Jesus defeated the devil and all of his power. What they're doing is not working. You want me to go farther with that? How good it gets? That's the bad news. Here's the good news. Jesus said, I give you power over all the power of the enemy. Jesus said, if you'll do what I do, what I, what I tell you to do, the church, the believing church, God's people can defeat the virus. You can defeat the virus. And as I was praying about this this week, it just gets excited. I get so wound up. I remembered a quotation that was made, I believe it was in, 19, in, the, in the late 50s, 1958 or, or 59, 56, somewhere along in there. There was a conference on evangelism in Albuquerque, and Reverend Billy Graham was the keynote speaker. And he was so happy to be in Indian country. That's as close as he got at Albuquerque, but that's better than being on the East Coast. He said these words. He said the Native Americans, this is 1958, I believe. He said the Native Americans are the spiritual sleeping giant in the kingdom of God. And when the Native people understand the power that they have in the name of Jesus. A revival will start in Indian land, and it will spread and change the entire world. That's Billy Graham. And I'm telling you, I believe the Spirit of God has been telling me this week, we are the people he was talking about. Right here, there's enough people in this congregation, even though we're not all here. Some people say we're not all here because we're not all there, but we are. The people that God allowed Billy Graham to see into the next century, the 21st century, are the people, native people, that are born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, filled with the Holy Ghost from power, and have been discipled and trained in the Word of God and knows the power of the Word of God and what God has given us. I'm telling you what, I'm telling you this morning, and I know this sounds crazy, but I believe with all of my heart that Right here is the epicenter or the beginning of that revival. The world is ready for an answer. The world is sick of by being tired and sick. The world is tired of being locked down and locked up. The world is begging for an answer. The answer you and I have had all these years. And now it's time to, Jesus said, don't have your light under, under a shade. Take the shade off and let the light shine now. Oh, Oh, People, we have the Holy Ghost. We have the name of Jesus. 
We have the word of God in our hearts. It's time for us to stand up and say, okay, world, are you tired of being sick? Are you tired of being afraid? Are you tired of that? Well, here, look, here's a people that knows what to do about it. The government did their best and failed. Medicine, bless our hearts, well-intentioned and meaning good and doing the very best, but it's not worked. The word of God works the word. The word will work for people who work the word. So, go back to James. James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil. That's our theme. Resist the devil. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. The devil has just been running wild because nobody has stood up against him. We've been in grief over the losses we've had. We've been in grief over the people that we have buried. But let me tell you, it's time to rise up and say no more to the devil. No more, devil! I'm a child of God. I have the power of the Holy Ghost. I have the word of God in me. And Jesus said, I have power over all the power of the devil. I'm telling you, let's in the name of Jesus rise up inside. And then I'm going to give you some things that you need to do. Last week I gave you this. And he said, come near to God. That was number one. For we can, before we can start that revival, we ourselves have to renew our connection with God. We have to get ourselves spiritually in shape. How do you do that? Number one, you start with repentance. You start with saying, God, I repent of my sins. I repent of my laziness, my spiritual laziness. I'm lazy because not you. I'm talking to people that's not here, you people that are out there. (laughs) Too lazy to go to church. I have a pastor friend in Missouri who pastors a strong church. It was my home church in college, Bible college. He's been doing streaming like all of us have. And they even after like us, we're having services, but we're still streaming. We were streaming before the pandemic, by the way. Uh, But he started streaming after the pandemic hit, and they were in lockdowns. And he bought all the equipment to do it with and everything. And and so they've been having services probably for several months now. Their crowd is not up to where it was before. Uh, and he was visiting one of his members that he hadn't seen since the pandemic. And they told him, Pastor, we're with you. You can't see us, but we're with you. We're watching you on our TV at home, streamed to our TV set. You look good on our, our TV. But we really like to get up and just watch you on television in our pajamas <laughs> with our coffee. And we can say amen from our recliners. Amen, pastor. Here's to you with a coffee. (laughs) He got so upset at those people that stayed home and watched him in their pajamas that he just just shut the streaming off. He said, we're not going to do that anymore. (laughs) If you want the word, you got to come to church. Well, we're going to keep streaming. We're going to keep broadcasting. But I tell you what, that's, a, that's plan B, the will of God is for God's people to be together. I can't hug somebody on the internet. I can't lay hands on anybody on the internet. I can't anoint you with oil on the internet. God said, get together and fellowship. 
and learn together and pray for each other that you can be healed. So let's start. You start this boot camp where it starts with honest, 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 soul searching, self examination. Am I pleasing God with my life? And then, second, we talked about this last week, is cleansing. Cleanse our hearts, get rid of jealousy and envy, get rid of anger, get rid of all the things that are in our hearts that cause us to sin. Get, give it to God. You're forgiven, we're already washed, but the Bible calls it the washing of feet. Remember when Jesus washed the disciples' feet? And Peter said, no, I'm not worthy that the Son of God could. I can't let you wash my feet. I'm not worthy to let you wash my feet. And Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you don't have any part of what I'm doing. He said, Jesus said to Peter, you're clean already. Your heart is clean but you have feet that walk through a dirty, muddy, nasty world. And your hands that get dirty and nasty because you, you, we, you live in that same contaminated, viral world. Sanitizer, hand sanitizer will never wash. It can wash the virus off now, but only the blood of Jesus can wash your hands permanently. Amen. Only the blood of Jesus. And, he, and, he, and our second weapon is the word of God. The Bible talks about the washing of the water of the word. Get the word of God. Discipline yourself. To read, study, and meditate on God's word. You're feeding your spirit man. I like to eat. I like, I cheat. <laughs> Roast mutton, mutton stew, corn stew, squash stew, Amen. fried bread, not as coddy. <laughs> I like it. Enchilada. She's, oh. Now you guys are in Spanish and Italian. And <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, with you. I'm an international eater. I, I like it all. But you know what? If, you fed, if we feed our spiritual man like we feed our physical man, we would be skin and bones. We'd be skinnier than Gabe. I'm picking on Gabe this morning. Our spiritual man. You would be so weak you couldn't stand up. You can't live on one meal a week. Oh, I go to church every Sunday, Pastor. whoop de do you eat one meal a week. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> You've got to feed yourself every day. I can feed you here, but bless God, you've got to start feeding yourself. Us that have raised kids and grandkids, those little ones, when they were brand new babies, you fed them the milk from the bottle or the breast, and we fed them. But after a while, they got so big, you said, you need to learn how to use a spoon, Jack. And you put, a, put them in a high chair and you tied them in there with that towel. And this way my mama did. I don't know how you did it. But the, uh, tied me in there with that dish towel. Put a bowl of food in front of me and said, eat that. I didn't know how to do that. And I made a mess of it. It was all over my face. It was all over my stomach. It was all over the table. It was all over the floor. The only way to learn how to eat is make a mess. Some of it will get in your mouth. 
And some of us haven't been feeding ourselves on the word of God because we're so afraid I don't understand it. I don't know where to read in the Bible. I don't know what it means when I read it. So I'm just making a mess of it. Here's some good news. It's all right to make a mess. It's cute. Show me your mess and I'll wipe your face off until you eat it again. Hello. We have got to learn to be strong in the Lord and the only way to be strong is to have proper nutrition. Feeding on the word of God. Drinking of the cup of new wine. Yes, you're going to start out like a baby, but you will, you've got to learn how. We're not trying to get you to be a clean eater. We're trying to make you a warrior. A warrior that's strong. A warrior that's healthy. A warrior that's agile. A warrior that can obey orders. A warrior. be a warrior you've got to learn to be submissive to authority Gunny Jim back there will tell you he's trained a lot of warriors and he'll tell you he can't train anybody to be a warrior if they won't obey him follow directions follow orders put yourself under a higher ranking officer or NCO. <laughs> Grace, God cannot save you unless you submit to him. God cannot give you the victory if you insist on fighting it on your own without any authority. Humble yourself. So it starts with submission and is carried out with humility. Now flip over to the book of 1 Peter. It's just a few pages over. First Peter chapter <clears throat> 5. And look at, at verse uh, 5. 5, 5. Last part of the verse. Submit yourselves to your elders. There's two main levels of submission that we have to be in if we're, if we're going to be victorious in the spiritual warfare. Number one, you've got to submit to God. Number two, you've got to submit to elders of the church, pastors and elders. The word elder means pastor. The, you've got to be able to follow pastor. God is separating the congregation in this church from a year ago, two years ago, from people who were just attenders and were consumers to people who are warriors. If you just come and you just nibble around the edges, just come for the freebies, just come for the music, just come for the entertainment value, and, and I know I can be entertaining. I'm a good, I tell good stories and I tell good jokes and I can make you laugh. But let me tell you, that's just icing on the cake. There's a serious side there that we says, hey, we're in a, we're, we have up a, against a formidable enemy that has to be respected. And we are the ones that God is looking to, to win this battle. And let me tell you something. 
The world has told us if we follow the protocols and we do what they say, we save lives. Turns out not to be true. But I'm telling you, if you do what God is telling us to do, and you'll, you'll discipline yourself and come in on board as a warrior, you will save thousands of lives. If you always wanted to be a hero, this is your chance. Because God is raising up a mighty army. God is raising up an army of people. And I kind of believe the spearhead of this army is going to be young people. I believe you guys and gals are going to accept this challenge. I believe you're going to accept the responsibility because the, your generation depends on you, not on me. I'm coming down to the closing years of my ministry. I've been at this 55 years, and I probably don't have another 50. 25, maybe. 30, okay, let's go 30. But if I've done my job right, you will pick up this mantle and carry it farther and do more than I have ever thought about doing. Go ahead, clap for our young people. God is calling some of you, or all of you. There is a reason you It's not to sit here and get entertained. It's to, it's a, it's a big cup to get you ready for battle. And then we commission you and send you out. The world is going to be turned around because that great Native American spearhead that Billy Graham told us about. Is anybody with me on this? Yeah. Clap for the Lord. Start with submission. Give yourself 100% to God. You've given God your heart, but now God is giving, asking you for your life. What we're talking about may, is probably a lifetime commitment. It's a purpose of life. It's a reason for living. Back 150 years ago, there was a tremendous youth revival broke out in the, on the eastern part of this nation. And God, the Spirit of God, was moving. There were thousands of people who were turning to the Lord. And the leaders of those were young people, high school and college age. And they were challenged like I'm challenging you today. And the great need that they were talking about back then was China, a Buddhist country, no Christians. And there was no airplanes. There was no, you didn't buy a ticket to get there. It was hard to get there. You had to get across the United States on a stagecoach or maybe a train. You had to get on a boat and weeks at sea getting to China. And everybody of those young people knew they would probably never come back home, never see their families again. But they were willing to give their lives to preach the gospel to the dark continent of China. And they, were, they came to be known as casket missionaries. Because they were so committed to the cause of preaching Jesus Christ to an ungodly nation that didn't, the name of Jesus wasn't heard there. But those young men and young women built their own casket. And they packed all their belongings in that casket. And that casket was first of all was their shipping crate of what they had to have, take to China to live. It was clothes, it may have been a few simple cooking utensils. It was, it was the basics of life that would fit in that pine box. 
And they got to the West Coast and they'd get on a boat. They could ship it as freight to China. And they had a service with their church and their families before they left home, their funeral service. Because everybody know, I'll never see you again alive. And you'll be buried in a foreign country. Hundreds of young people made that commitment to be a casket missionary to China. Guess what? Today, even under the Communist Chinese Party, there are millions of Christians in China. Today. They can't have a church like this because church is illegal. But they meet in what they call house churches, underground house churches. Secret services. But the revival fires have spread across communist China because young people, I believe young people, I think you're like I was when I was 17 years old. I needed a reason to live. I needed a lifetime goal. I needed a purpose for my life. And I looked at college I looked at a career in farming. My family are farmers and ranchers. I probably could have done pretty good doing that. But let me tell you something. I found my calling and my purpose at an altar in church. But I said to God, yes, yes, yes. I may never make enough money to buy a nice house. I may never make enough money to buy new cars. I may never make enough money to take a cruise. But God, when I get to the end of my life, I want to look behind me. I want to see an army of believers that heard the gospel that I preached. You know what? God has done it. God has done it. And I found this scripture many years later where Jesus said, the disciples asked Jesus, What's, what are we going to get if we make that commitment to you? Jesus said, no man has left his home and his family for my sake and their gospels, but what he will receive eternal life and he said and even you can have a good life here and here I am after 55 years we I don't know if you realize it but this church is the largest Native American congregation in America it is This church has seen hundreds of people come to the Lord Amen. in 25 years. Yeah. And I believe with all of my heart we're just getting started. Amen. We're going to have a flourishing Bible college. We're going to have a flourishing youth outreach. We're going to have a flourishing media outreach. I prophesied this 25 years ago. If you go to my website, freddyhall.org, you have the, the, the vision that I wrote 25 years ago still there. And that's exactly what I'm telling you today. When we get to heaven, God's not going to ask us how many cars we own. He's not going to ask us what's the balance in your 401k he's not going to ask you how much your social security check is he's not going to ask you if you got a home site lease he's not going to ask you if you live in a mansion or a, a hogan he's going to open the books 
and reward us according to what we did for God. And that's worth a whole lot more than anything this world has to offer. So let me just encourage you today to do that real quickly. I'm going to wrap this up in the next five minutes in the name of Jesus. 1 Peter 5, 5. Remember we ended with humble yourself in James 5, 10. So here Peter picks it up and he says, all of you clothe yourself with humility toward one another. See, we're bringing it down. We submit to God. We submit to pastors. Now he says, I want you to be humble toward each other. Because, and here's the principle, God dis despises the proud. But he shows favor to the humble. Be humble. Be humble enough to submit on every level. And then he says, humble yourselves, therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. God is going to promote you in his time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Amen. But be alert. And of sober mind, your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Here it is again, the resistance. Resist him. Stand firm in the faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And here's the bottom line, and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ. Well, after you have suffered a little while, how many think we have suffered a little while already? Now it's time. Well, he himself will restore you and make you strong and firm and steadfast. Isn't that a promise? Wow, that's a promise. So I want to pray with you right now. And I think God is going to start a process of submission and humiliation in every one of us here today to where we can submit to God, to submit to the authority God puts over us, and submit to one another. Then God can start building you up again. Amen. If you're willing to pray that prayer with me, would you please stand right there where you are? And by standing, you're saying, yes, I want to submit to God. I'm willing to join this army. I'm willing to join the resistance. I'm willing to be a warrior with all the discipline that goes with it. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Some of you are still thinking about it. That's good. Think it over before you... Say yes to this. Praise God. Is that everybody? Okay, I want you to talk to God. This is between you and him. I'm going to pray for you, but I want you to pray for yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, look at this congregation on their feet. Hands raised. God, we're volunteers. We're volunteering for service. To be a warrior. To be a warrior in this spiritual army. Lord, we're submitting to you again today. Wash us, Father, clean. Lord, wash our hands, our feet, our hearts, our minds. Everything pure and clean before a holy God. Lord, and we're submitting to the boot camp. The boot camp of the discipline of prayer. The boot camp of the discipline of reading God's word, studying God's word, meditating on God's word. Lord, we're volunteering, God, because we believe we are the called. We're called by God to be warriors. 
Make us warriors. Warriors of faith. Warriors of power. Overcomers. We're tired of being on the defense. We're going on the offense today. We're going after the devil in Jesus' name. Now, if you meant that, say amen with me. Praise amen. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You sit down for a few minutes. Praise the Lord. Do I see Sister Ann Lewis back there? Hallelujah. Oh, all hello, right. hello, hello. It is so good to see you back. We have missed you. Praise the Lord. You're going to come over here. I'm going to come over there. Yeah, you're going to come over here. What am I going to do over there? You're going to help announce Bible school.